What's going on everybody? Welcome back to my channel once again. So about three years ago, I tested out the two auto electric melting furnace. And to this day, it's still going strong. I still use it quite a bit. So today we're gonna be looking at the upgraded version. This is the TRF 3000, but I'm gonna go ahead. I'm gonna get this unboxed, opened up. And as you can see, this is taped up pretty good, but I'll get this opened up. We'll see what's inside and let's try this out. All right, so I got this all taken out of the box. And as you can see, this is everything that it comes with. You have the furnace itself. You have the instruction manual, which goes into some pretty good detail on how to get it set up, safety precautions. If you need to swap out a PID controller, change a resistance wire, it does go into to detail on how to do that, which is pretty helpful. You have the tongs, which is actually on a spring right here. so. It lets go pretty easily. It does come with a graphite mold with a bunch of different designs, as you can see. It does come with a three kilogram crucible and a one kilogram crucible. It comes with a nice pair of gloves and the power cord. So let's take a closer look at the machine itself. So just like on the previous model, it does have this metal mesh going around just in case you accidentally touch it or rub against it, you're not gonna burn yourself since you don't wanna be touching anything else because it will be extremely hot. It does have an upgraded PID controller, which we'll turn that on and we'll check that out here in a few. It does have the power switch right on the right-hand side. And on the left-hand side, it does have a list of different metals and their melting temperatures, just in case you don't remember them. It is a quick little reference so that you know the melting point of different materials. And of course, on the back side is where you plug in the power cord. On the top, you have your hinge to place the crucible inside. And here you can see how deep it actually is. So all that's left to do now is take this out into the garage and try it out. Now I will be melting down some copper because it does have a much higher melting point than let's say zinc or lead or tin or something like that. So we're gonna try copper and they say that this will melt it in half the time as the previous model. And the other one that I've been using, it takes about an hour to melt down copper. So I'm hoping this will do it in about 30 minutes, but we're going to find out. I will be using this three kilogram crucible and I probably won't need an extension cord, but for those of you that if you do, I recommend using a thicker gauge wire just so you don't cause a fire or a short or it just doesn't produce enough current to get it to melt. But let's go ahead out into the garage. Let's try this out and let's see how this works. All right, so I have this all set up outside. And as you can see here, I'm just gonna be melting down a whole bunch of scrap copper wire that I had laying around. So we're gonna bend this all up, get it put in the crucible Turn this on and let's see how we can melt this. So we'll get this turned on. And I'm just going to be using this graphite mold. So we have, this is the temperature that it's raising up to. I have this set at 1200. Now, if you want to lower this or raise this, I can easily just by pressing the numbers and I can have that set. Now it's set at 1100. I'm just going to bump this back up to 12 to where it was at. And as you can see, this is actually rising pretty quickly. So I'm hoping this doesn't take that long to get up to temperature. So I'll let this run for a bit and we'll take a look at the time. We'll time this and go from there. So when I started this, it was like 242 
Now you can see it's 244 and it's already up to 250 degrees. So we'll let this go for a bit more and we'll come back and check on the time. All right, so taking a look at the time, it's been about 10 minutes and we're already up to uh, 11.20 just about. So right now the temperature is reading 1200 and it's three o'clock now. So it's not actually melted yet. The thermal couple is actually reading that it's 1200 degrees, but it still has to heat up the entire graphite crucible as well in order to melt it. So that has to heat up. As you can see, I'll open this lid and it is glowing and it is hot, but it's not melted yet. Now this is the max I can set this temperature to. If I go and try and go higher and go, let's just say, let's go over and let's just go to 1205 and I hit set, you can see that it doesn't change. So 1200 is the highest that it will go. And now this does get very hot. I can still kind of touch it, but I don't want to keep my hand there because it will burn it. So this does still get pretty warm. So it's been just over a half an hour now. It's 318. And it's, you can see smoke coming up the top and it's not fully melted yet, but it's getting there. So I think hopefully in just a few more minutes, it should be melted. So I wasn't going to use their mold, but I think I might just because I might use, just use both, pour one of these in here and also pour the rest in here. So we're going to do both. Now I always heat it up just using a propane torch. Now you don't need to do this for very long, just to make sure any moisture that could be present is gone. All right, so there you have it, testing out their newest model. And I did go ahead and use their graphite mold instead of one of mine, just because it was supplied with it. So I figured I might as well use it. And here you can see the before and after of what it looks like once you clean up your pieces a little bit. And as you can see, that looks much nicer. Now I just roughly did this, so it's not the best, but just to give you an idea, that's how it is. Again, with this arrowhead, I just did the top of it, the back I just kind of left alone. So you can kind of see the difference. So I do have their previous model here on the left and their newest one is on the right that I just used. And as you can see, the, the old one is significantly different than the newer one. The old one is a little bit higher. It is a little bit more bulky and wider and it does come with handles. The newer one is a little bit shorter it's an octagon base compared to a square, but it doesn't have any handles, so it is a little bit more difficult to move. And by difficult means not as easy as with handles because this really doesn't weigh that much. So it is fairly easy to move just by lifting it. So really not that big of a deal, but I do really like the handles on the previous one just because it is a little bit more simple to move around. Now the newer model did heat up significantly faster than their previous one. For me to melt down copper in the old one it would take me about a little over an hour for it to fully melt and be done for the same amount that I did in this one. And this one took around 35, 40 minutes for it to completely melt for all of it. It did start melting around, I don't know, maybe 25, 30 minutes, but for all of it to melt, 
took about 40 minutes. Their PID controller is just about the same, but this one probably is a little bit more simplistic, meaning it's just a little bit easier to use than this one. They're both very, very simple, but this one, I think they just kind of removed a few different buttons that you don't need. So their newer model is 1800 watts compared to their previous one at 1400 watts. So this does heat up significantly faster. Now, keep in mind though that when this is heating up, it will reach the temperature, but the metal inside actually won't because it still has to heat up the entire crucible to allow all the metal to actually get melted. So overall, would I recommend it? I would definitely say yes. If you're looking for an electric melter that's easy to use and simple, I would go with the newest model before going with the previous model just because it does heat up quicker and melt your metal quicker compared to the previous model and it is a little bit smaller and compact in size. Now again, I do wish it had handles that came on it like the previous model, but it's really not that big of a deal because it is still really simple to move. If you are in the market though to pick up one of these electric melting furnaces, I will put a link though down in the description on where you can pick this up. Well, that's gonna be it for this video, everybody. I hope you all enjoyed it, and if you did, give it a thumbs up. Hit that subscribe button down below, ring the bell, get notified of all the new videos that come out, and as always, thanks for watching, and I will see you in the next one.